Before I start my talk, I'm just going to say a few words about something which I was going to talk about, um, which was discussed, which came, an idea came up from uh, Chessing Schools and Communities Chief Operating Officer Chris Vegan, which is just something of an idea that's, that's becoming more prevalent in the UK, um, which is if we're talking about the future of chess in education, what a, a lot of people are talking about in the UK is lifelong learning. The, you know, people are living longer. And so, although this isn't really being touched on in this conference, maybe it's something for a future conference, the idea that, you know, people can, be, can learn chess at any time in their lives. And one of the things that we do in chess in schools and communities is we're also running pilot projects for older people. And what's also becoming interesting is how do you... How do you involve the sectors of society that aren't involved in chess? And one of the biggest sectors in society who are not involved in chess, of course, is that sector of society who make up a little bit more than half of society and who are not hugely overrepresented in the room that I can see, and that's women. And one of the things that we're looking into is how do we get more women playing chess? And how do we get more older people playing chess? Now, for example, for older people, what's become quite apparent, even at a very, very early stage, is that the timings of chess clubs and chess activities don't suit older people necessarily. It's not that great for an old person who may be living on their own to get out at night to go to a chess club. Most chess clubs take place in the evening. Okay? So one of the things that we're piloting is chess for older people in public libraries, in public spaces, that takes place during the daytime. The other thing that we're also, uh, that, that obviously we should be aware of is that, you know, very few mothers play chess. So if you're going to have chess in the community for mothers, then you've got to time it at a time when mothers can, can get there, which might be early afternoon, for example. Okay, so that's just something that I wanted to talk about before I, I go on to the subject of, uh, of, of my talk. And also I wanted to thank uh, Bashar, uh, particularly, A, for coming, first of all, because... One of the things that needs to happen is that FIDE needs to get more involved generally, more involved in cooperative ventures with other organisations, with the European Chess Union, European Chess Union Education Commission, and when you have a new set of people involved, you get a chance to, to do new things and to change the way things are. And I'd like you to, to thank you for previewing a few of my slides. That was really good. There's a lot of the things that you said uh, are the things that, I, are the things that, that I'm going to say. Um, and one of the focuses of what I'm going to say is, and one of the first things that I do say in my slides is that every country is different. Every country is different. And FIDE represents all of those countries. And, you know, Sweden is in a very good place. Yes, but, you know, 7,200 teachers, you know, I could... I could almost burst out crying at the, the, the thought of that. <laughs> and Bashar, you know, you've got... Uh, great partnerships with organisations. The thing is, it, of course, Britain is not a centralised state like France is, unfortunately, and uh, indeed we're finding it very difficult to talk about anything else other than Brexit. Um, so it's very difficult to actually get partners like that in Britain because actually don't really exist. But, and this is very relevant to those delegates who, has who might be staying in the, uh, in the Premier Inn uh, by the Hogarth roundabout, because uh, you're probably having to familiarise yourself with buses. Um, there is a joke in London, or it's not really a joke, it's just a reality, which is that you can wait ages for a London bus, and all of a sudden, three come along at the same time. Right now, everyone who's tried to catch a bus in London knows about that. And in Britain, we've been waiting, and I've been working in chess, well, I mean, for 40 years, but seriously in chess, within the charity for about 10, and we've been banging on the door of government for those last 10 years, and very rarely getting anywhere, achieving anything. And yet in the last week, we've actually managed to come to the attention of two different ministries, which is actually incredible and makes me very, very hopeful for the future. Uh, the first one is, and it is within the scope of, of, the, um, of, of the conference, actually, Bashar Prisons, uh, and you've got such an interesting experience in it, I hope perhaps you can come to workshop number three. Um, in, in England, uh, in Britain, uh, uh, only last week, I was invited in to see the minister responsible for prisons, Rory Stewart. 
and we now have the actual backing of the Ministry of Justice uh, to introduce a program into, into Britain's prisons, which I think is really incredible. Uh, it's great progress for us as, uh, you know, as, as an organization and just for chess generally. And also, in a speech, it was the day before yesterday, uh, Matt Hancock, the health minister, mentioned the work that the charity is doing with older people in Brighton, partnering with, uh, with uh, the Dementia Alliance. So I think we're on a, we're on a little bit of a roll here. Uh, I, think there is, I think there is hope for spreading the message of how chess can contribute to society and education. And so at uh, the behest of John and, and Jesper, I just put my mind to, towards thinking how the FIDE Chess in Education Commission might might improve over the previous iteration. And while this is titled the FIDE Chess and Edu Commission, Education Commission, actually it's more a set of ideas for any federation, for any chess in schools organization within a national federation about how they should operate, the things they should be thinking about, and what some of our objectives are. So it shouldn't just be considered as an idea for FIDE. Okay, if I hit a button, might I move down? What do you reckon, yeah. the down arrow? Yeah, yeah, or, or the space even. Okay, well I don't know, that one seems to have all the way to the end. I'm going to hit the down arrow. Well that's exciting. Right, so, the first thing I looked at was what the old Chess in Schools Commission, which I'm really delighted, this is a really good thing that happened straight away, it's been renamed the Chess in Education Commission. Much better, okay? Much, much better, <coughs> because it's not just schools that we're talking about. And I looked at some of the things that are in the handbook, Assist national federations to introduce chess in schools. Yep, good idea. Prepare curriculum, curricula, courseware for chess in education in schools. Well, forgive me, but I think we've got so many of these things, we don't need any more. You know, one of the things that I'm going to emphasise later on is that what we actually need to do is to get all the wonderful material that we've got, classify it, grade it, spread it uh, send it out. In the past, what the Chess in Schools Commission was doing, it's kind of measuring its success, it seems to be, by the amount of training material it produced. Frankly, I don't think we need any more. Prepare training programs for schools, well, ditto. And the last one, well, I wasn't sure what that meant, so whatever. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> yeah. So, moving on from the mission, these are my thoughts. I mean, you know, sounds a bit political, it all rhymes. Initiate, motivate, agitate, propagate, officiate, curate, and something which I think is seriously underestimated in FIDE and in a lot of organisations, translate. I mean, the thing that strikes me, he's not here, unfortunately, Ancho Garcia, but he's been here at many of our previous uh, conferences. You know, there's like this parallel universe in the Spanish language that I, as a non-Spanish speaker, never have access to all kinds of research, all kinds of materials. So let's just see, let's just put a little bit of flesh around some of those ideas. So initiate, motivate, agitate. So the Chess and Education Commission, national bodies, they should be the ones that start the movement, that drive the movement. And every country is absolutely, di is, is completely different. You know, not every country has got uh, this wonderful centralization that France has that actually really works, it seems to me, in many ways that we don't have here. Not every country has a president who says, you shall play chess. And then all the children go, yes, we will play chess. And all the teachers go, yes, we will teach chess. And it happens. You know, some countries don't have enough chess sets. Some countries, don't even, most people don't even know what chess is. So every country is different. And that's just got to be recognised. And I think that what FIDE can do, and what national federations can do, and you know, the French and Swedish federations, are, I think, are a very good example of this, and actually what we're doing here now, relatedly, is go to the top. Go to the top. Knock on the doors of the influencers and of the policy makers, and get your message known. And, you know, yes, but I was thinking your presentation, that'd be a great presentation if it could be translated into 80 languages just to give to any Ministry of Education. Okay, won't take the minister's time up too much, you know. You'll be in there, you'll get your half an hour, five minutes to say hello, five minutes who I am, 15 minute presentation, five minute conclusions, out you go. Okay? And if something like, and if that kind of message could be sent to all the 180 odd, 190 odd countries, and some person then goes off to their government or at least starts knocking on the door, maybe we'll start getting somewhere. And we should also be thinking, 
about actually campaigning. Because one of the things that I've learned is the value of PR ever since I started the charity. With, for just a small amount of money, we've been able to achieve an incredible amount. So what I believe the Commission should, should act as, and I believe what each federation should act as within, with it, within its uh, education structure, is to be the hub that sends out the message and goes out to influence like think tanks, trade unions, teachers. So one of the things that we're doing, for example, is we're going to the biggest conference, uh, the biggest trade union, uh, uh, teachers trade union conference in the UK. And we'll have a stand there spreading the message. And I think that's something that we should be doing. And what the commission could do or what federations could do is create the materials and the messaging that goes into those, into those interactions. Let's have more seminars. And let's have an education commission seminar for everyone around the world. Officiate. So if there's one thing that needs to happen, and I know, Jesper, you're very, very strong on this, is we have to establish standards. We have to establish standards for training material, but also particularly, I think, for teaching and for training courses. And this is something that the European Chess Union is doing extremely well. And indeed, I think there is a course after this conference, isn't there? John, there's, uh, a, there's a school chess training yeah. course and a chess and mathematics course. Yeah. So, and this is just an idea. Right now, I mean, I'm, I'm a, a FIDE trainer or something, I think. Um, I, I don't know. I think, some, uh, I think it was one of the people in FIDE just told me I was one day. I got a badge. Um, at, and what, um, from what I understand of that, it's, you know, it's very much oriented, like Basha said, we have to move away from competition so much because... You know, the hundreds of millions of people who can play chess, a lot of them aren't going to be, the majority of them aren't going to be interested in competition. It's mainly, you know, people going to the London Chess Classic, those kinds of people who are probably going to make up, what well, I would hope, 1% of chess players. Maybe that's even too much. I don't know. So maybe what we should be doing by using things like the new ECU course is produce a qualification for someone who is trained to teach absolute beginners in schools, a FIDE schools chess trainer. And then, and this leads in from other contributions, including, for example, uh, what, um, what I did with Yes to Chess through uh, Chess in Schools and Communities, what uh, has happened in the, in the schools outside uh, the French-speaking schools around the world. You have an unbelievable opportunity, I think, for a global schools chess online competition. I can think of so many companies that would be fighting for the right to sponsor a competition like that. But someone's got to do it. The Education Commission should do, in my opinion, is collect and share all the best practice that all of you do, that all of you have worked on, that all of you have created, and other people around the world, and make that all available to be the resource hub, to be the portal for all the best practice on teaching, and in particular, all the research. I know that St. Louis made an attempt to do this, but it seems to me this is actually the responsibility of the Education Commission to make sure that any new research is disseminated, to make sure that people know that this research is going on. And finally, we're still officiate. Okay, we've given up. <laughs> well, then turn it off. Finally, to once you've assembled all the training materials, once you've classified them, once you've, once you've, once you've analysed what kind of interventions, what, what areas of, of school, what age groups these are meant for, then let's spread them out. I mean, I think that the Chess Plus newsletter is a really good start in this, by the way. I mean, I really look forward to getting my newsletter every week with teaching ideas, notifications about conferences, all this sort of thing. But that should be happening on a, on a, on a global scale. And finally, though you can't see it, oh, he's going to do something. This stuff in languages that are spoken only by a few million people, and it's all closed to us. And I think that that should be one of the functions as well. Finding the great material that's produced all around the world in Arabic or Hindi or lots of other languages and enable us to share all of that. And on that very global note, where is Irish? <laughs> Gaelic? <laughs>
More to the point, I shall where's Ireland, actually. Centre of the world. Indeed. By the way, that's my CAO. He's Irish. We're in, a, we're, we're in the Irish centre and there's no Ireland on the map. There's nothing political about that. But... <laughs> oh, please, no Brexit. No Brexit. Yeah, and finally, translate. I mean, I, th I think that really it's, it's such a shame that so much material is produced, so much fantastic material is being produced, but most people don't even know it's there or can't understand it. And lastly, because I haven't given them a proper mention yet, I do want to say thank you. I've mentioned them in glowing terms already in this time, but of course the European Chess Union does indeed contribute to this conference, both in terms of the content and also financially, and we are extremely grateful to them too. Okay, that's all from me.